and even though you've gone through this whole fentanyl problem this the, you know the opioid thing with people with injuries my god it's so legendary so many people have had those issues but you came out of the the other end and you seem clear as day well i, I don't have an addictive personality you know because i'm either all the way in or all the way out hmm. and you gotta realize that all these wrestlers and i i don't know the numbers but you know if you said football how many wrestlers have died in the last 25 years the number could be 10 or 20 you know if you said baseball the number could be 10 or 20 but when you say wrestling in the last 30 years it's a couple hundred mm. like 250 guys that have heart attack overdosed this that and the other and i was the ring leader yeah. you know i was definitely the ring leader and i ran real hard but I just kind of knew when we got to the edge, I knew when to pull back. So you know? what was, is this partying or is this, did it start with injuries and then lead to? It's the schedule. The it was schedule. the schedule first off and not have any real rules because like, <clears throat> it's like Vince McMahon runs the show, okay? And so when, let's just say Roman Reigns goes out he's one of their biggest stars now I don't know if you guys are familiar with what's going yeah. on now but Roman Reigns is a huge star and when he goes out to wrestle somebody like Dolph Ziggler you know the referee or, or Vince or whoever's the, the the agent will say Roman Reigns is going to beat you Joe Rogan with the sleeper hold or something or a Superman punch okay fine well back in the day you know when we first started and Vince took over I'd go to the Philadelphia Spectrum and Vince would say, okay, I want you to beat Piper with a leg drop. So, okay, I'd go tell her, hey, Roddy, you know Vince wants me to go over and beat you with a leg drop? He'd go, no. Okay. Well, what do you want to do, Roddy? You know? And then I'd have to explain business to a lot of guys. And I love Roddy to death. We hated each other for years. And then we became really, really close before he passed the last five or six years. And so I would always tease him when we became friends. I said, Roddy... Like when you didn't want to do, I, I, Randy and I would flip the belt back and forth all the time because Randy would do business, you know, and if I needed the belt back after a movie, give it back, then I'd drop it to him again. <laughs> and, and I told Piper, I said, you made a lot of money, but can you imagine how much money, I mean, you got eight kids or seven or eight kids, or, I said, can you imagine how much money you would have made if you'd have let me beat you one time? Then I could have went to Vince and said, hey, we can trust this guy. Let's put the belt on Piper because I don't need the belt. Right. I got the gimmick, bro. I'm all through right. my stuff. I was locked in a I needed somebody to take the belt so I could chase right. him. Right. Because if I can put that belt on you, I see a big dollar sign there. And I'll chase your ass all over the place. Right. I said, Roddy, can you imagine how much money you would have made if you let me just beat you once? And then you come to WCW when I'm a bad guy, you beat me every night. Big deal. I mean, it's, right. it's a work, brother. You know? Right. It's all about the money and the miles. If there's money to be made, let's make it, brother. You know, so throughout all this stuff running with these guys, I saw them all drop off, you know, one at a time, one at a time. And it was the schedule, which is very taxing because we were running really hard back in the day. It was, you could go to Austin, Texas tonight. Hey, right, Doc, I hurt my back, I hurt my back. Okay, uh, Piper or Hogan, here's 30 perks. And the next night you're in Chicago. Hey, Doc, I hurt my back. Oh, okay. Mm. You, every single town, there was a doctor, you know. And that's how this whole thing got started. You know, and then, you know, all of a sudden it ends, you know, for whatever reason, you go get a couple DUIs or you get in a fight and hurt somebody really bad or whatever the case may be. And all of a sudden you're either too old or you get injured or you hurt somebody, you do some, some stupid legal stuff and your career ends. And then you go home and you don't fit in at home because you've been gone for 10 or 12 years and your wife's raised the kids. You walk in, you don't fit in. So dad's home now. So what are you doing here right. you know, you, and you don't fit in and then that's when the drinking and and you know then there's that no I, I tell my girl all the time i said i get this crazy turbulence in me you know and it hits me like it's seven or eight o'clock at night i get like if it's another man i'm real good with turbulence with another man but just with normal you know people you know like her i don't want to start anything with her or pick pick, pick at her but that turbulence from every night going from playing cards with Andre, you know, at nine o'clock at night till 10 minutes later, somebody kicking you in the head, kicking you and stomping you and beating on you. Yeah. And coming up, raw. So do you crazy. think your body was like programmed to get ready to do violence? Yeah. At night? I could go from sitting here talking to you like this and two minutes later I walk out there and I'm spinning around, spinning around. When I slide it under the ropes, this bad guy stomping me in the head 
and you got to make that adjustment. So all of a sudden at night, I'm sitting around at eight o'clock at night, and I'm going like this. That's I'm watching American wild. Idol. I'm going, what is wrong with me? I can feel this turbulence ramping up in me. And that's why I got the gym in my house, because sometimes I'll go downstairs and I'll, I'll yeah. crank at night. Just, you know, because yeah. when you're used to breaking that sweat every night yeah. and wrestling a guy your own size and physically getting completely worn out to where you're like, okay, now I can relax. I've had enough, you know. Yeah. You miss that. And a lot of these guys go home after doing this. They don't know how to adjust. And all of a sudden, they adjust with over medicating and mm -hmm. drinking, and then they really don't fit in at home. And the next thing you know, there's a tragedy, or they do too much, too many sonos, or too much blow, mm -hmm. or too much this. And it's just been a repeat scenario in our business. So for me, you know, talking about all this negativity and, and the stuff that's going down, my life is really good, brother. I mean, you know, I might have some physical issues from all the surgeries. But I'm healthy as a horse, you know, and at the end of the day, I train, I eat good. I mean, I'm, you know, I really have a great outlook on everything, you know, and I have my... Do You look good. You look healthy. You really do. It's great to see. Well, I mean, you know, I just turned 70. That's amazing. And, and a lot of guys that, you know, I, that are around that I went to high school and I see them, they look like they're 95. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and I had some guy come to me the other day, hey, we got the same birthday, we're the same age. I looked, and it was at, during karaoke at my bar. And he goes, we're the exact same age. I looked at him, bro, he was like 100 miles of bad road. Yeah. And I'm like, what did this guy do People to himself? stop moving. We went to see Mick Jagger last week, we went to see the Stones last year. Yeah. And it was, Mick Jagger's Biden's age, and he has two trailers that he brings everywhere he goes that are just exercise equipment. Wow. Like this guy trains every day. That's he trains crazy. every day. And that's that's how you can still move around like that when you're 80. He's up there dancing and yeah. shit and singing and putting on this amazing show at 80 fucking years old. Yeah, but you know? I, I think a lot of it's mindset too, you know, because not to Bible thump you to death, bro, but I keep I keep one foot in each each zone, man. I keep you know, in this human incarnation, I keep one foot, you know, kind of like in the human incarnation. I keep one foot in the spiritual incarnation, you know, mm. and when stuff goes down or this goes down or things go wrong in my life, I deal with it, you know, as efficiently as I can. I, then I bracket it and I go back to center, you know, 